So this details a meeting that they had in the White House between Sidney Powell, Mike Flynn, the guy from Overstock.com, and some of the White House counsel. <coughs> and it is uh, quite a doozy. The other three parts, this is the last part. The other three parts are in the Discord. I think I put this one in there too. Four conspiracy theorists marched into the Oval Office. It was early evening, Friday, December the 18th. More than a month after the election had been declared for Joe Biden, and four days after the Electoral College met in every state to make it official. How the hell did Sydney get in the building? White House Senior Executive Advisor Eric Hirschman grumbled from the outer Oval Office as Sidney Powell and her entourage strutted by to visit the president. President, Trump private, president Trump's private schedule hadn't included appointments for Powell or the others. Former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, former Overstock.com CEO Patrick Green, and little-known former Trump administration official Emily Newman. But they'd come to convince Trump that he had more had the power to take extreme measures and keep fighting. As Powell and the others entered the Oval Office that evening, Hersherman, a wealthy business executive and former partner at Kazowitz, Benson, and Torres, who had been pulled out of quasi-retirement to advise Trump, quietly slipped in behind them. The hours to come would pit the insurgent conspiracy conspiracists against a handful of White House lawyers and advisors determined to keep the president from giving into, tempt, into temptation and invoking emergency national security powers, seize voting machines, and disable the primary levers of American democracy. Hersherman took a seat in a yellow chair close to the doorway. Pal Flynn, Newman, and Breen sat in a row uh, before the resolute desk facing the president. For weeks now, ever since Rudy Giuliani had commandeered Trump's floundering campaign to overturn the election, outsiders had been coming out of the woodwork to feed the president wild allegations of voter fraud based on highly dubious sources. Trump was no longer focused on any semblance of governing agenda, instead spending his days taking phone calls and meetings from anyone armed with conspiracy theories about the election. For the White House staff, it was an under unending sea of garbage churned up by bottom feeders. Powell began this meeting with the same baseless claims that now have her facing a $1.3 billion defamation lawsuit. She told the president that Dominion voting systems had rigged their machines to flip votes from Trump to Biden and that it wasn't part of an internet and that it was part of an international communist plot to steal the election for Democrats. Still sounds weird every time we say it. Uh, this is just Powell's statement because she didn't want to give uh, she didn't give a statement to Axios. Uh, Powell waved an affidavit from a pile of papers in her lap, claiming it contained testimony from someone involved and the development of rigged voting machines in Venezuela. She proposed declaring a national emergency, granting her and her cabal top-secret security clearance and using the U.S. government to seize Dominion voting machines. Like, all those crazy theories that you heard about, like, we really came very close to all of them coming true. Like, all the people are like, oh, that would never happen. Like, they almost happened. Uh, hold on a minute, Sidney, Hersherman interrupted from the back of the Oval Office. You're part of the Rudy team, right? Is your theory that Democrats got together and changed the rules, or is it that there was foreign interference in our election? Giuliani's legal efforts, while replete and de with debunked claims about voter fraud, had largely focused on allegations of misconduct by corrupt Democrats and election officials. It's foreign interference, Powell insisted, then added, Rudy hasn't understood what this case was about until just now. In disbelief, Hersherman yelled to an aide in the outer Oval Office, Get Pat down here immediately. Several minutes later, White House counsel Pat Cipollone walked into the Oval and uh, walked into the Oval. He looked at Breen and said, Who are you? <laughs> uh, the meeting was already getting heated. White House staff had spent weeks poring over the evidence underlying hundreds of affidavits and other claims of fraud promoted by Trump allies like Powell. The team had had done their due diligence and knew the specific details of what was being alleged better than anybody. Time and time again, they found Powell's allegations fell apart under basic scrutiny. But Powell's fixing on Trump's continued to elaborate on a fantastical election narrative involving Venezuela, Iran, China, and others. She named a county in Georgia where she claimed she could prove that Dominion had illegally flipped the vote. Hersherman interrupted to point out that Trump had actually won the Georgia county in question, so your theory is that Dominion intentionally flipped the vote so we could win the county? 
As for Powell's larger claim, he demanded she provide evidence for what, if true, would amount to the greatest national security breach in American history. They needed to dial in one of the campaign's lawyers, Hersherman said, and the Trump campaign lawyer, Matt Morgan, was patched in via speakerphone. By now, people were yelling and cursing. The room was starting to fill up. Trump's personal assistant summoned White House Staff Secretary Derek Lyons to join the meeting and ask him to bring a, comp a copy of the 2018 executive order that Pal the Pal Group kept citing as a key victory. Of key victory, Lyons agreed with Cipollone that the other officials that Pal Pal theories were nonsensical. This it was now four against four. Flynn went berserk. The former three-star general whom Trump had fired as his first national security advisor after he was caught lying to the FBI and was later pardoned, stood up and turned from the resolute desk to face Hersherman. You're quitting. You're a quitter. You're not fighting, he exploded at the senior advisor. Flynn then turned to the president and implored, Sir, we need fighters. Hersherman ignored Flynn at first and continued to probe Powell's pitch with questions about the underlying evidence. All you do is promise, but you never deliver, he said to her sharply. Flynn was ranting and seemingly infuriating about anyone challenging Powell who, hadn't, who had represented him in his recent legal battles. Finally, Hersherman had enough. Why the fuck do you keep standing up and screaming at me, he shot back at Flynn. If you want to come over here, then come over here. If not, then sit your ass down. Flynn sat back down. The meeting had come entirely off the rails. Breen, backing up Flynn, told Trump the White House lawyers didn't care about him and were being obstructive. Uh, Breen is the is the overstock guy, just in case you uh, was backing up Flynn and told Trump the White House lawyers didn't care about him and were being obstructive. Sir, we're both entrepreneurs and we both built businesses, the former overstock CEO told Trump. We know that there are times when you have to be creative and take different steps. This was a remarkable level of personal familiarity, given that this was the first time Breen had met the president, and all the staunchness and buffers between the White House and the outside world had crumbled. Breen kept attacking the senior White House staff in front of Trump. They already abandoned you, he told the president aggressively. Periodically during the meeting, Flynn and Breen challenged Trump's top staff, portraying them as disloyal. So do you think the president won or not? Like, these guys are like fucking five-year-olds, man. I swear to God. At one point, with Flynn shouting, Breen raised his hand to talk. He stood up and turned around to face Hersherman. You're a quitter, he said. You've been interfering with everything. You've been cutting us off. Do you even know who the fuck I am, you idiot? Hersherman snapped back. Yeah, you're Patrick Cipollone, Breen said. Wrong. Wrong, you idiot. <laughs> yeah. The staff were now on their feet, standing behind one of the couches and facing the PAL crew at the Resolute desk. Cipollone stood at Hersherman's left. Lyons, and on his last day on the job, stood to Hersherman's right. Trump was behind the desk watching the show. He briefly left the meeting to wander into his private dining room. The usually mild-mannered Lyons blasted the PAL set. You brought 60 cases, and you've lost every case you've had. Trump came back into the Oval Office from the dining room to rejoin the meeting. Lyons pointed out that Powell, out to Powell that their incompetence went beyond their lawsuits, being thrown out for standing. You somehow managed to misspell the word district three different ways in your suits, he said pointedly. In the Georgia case, yeah, it just talks about, uh, basically they misspelled uh, district three times, but not only did they misspell it three times, they misspelled it three different ways in one lawsuit. These were sloppy errors, but given that these lawsuits aim to overturn a presidential election, the court nomenclature should have been pristine. Powell, Flynn, and Breen began attacking Lyons as they renewed their argument to Trump. There you go again. They want to focus on the insignificant details instead of the fighting for instead of fighting for you. Trump replied, No, no, he's right. That was very embarrassing. That shouldn't have happened. And I can almost I can almost see him saying like that, like, no, no, he's right, that's right, that, that's embarrassing, that shouldn't have happened. The PAL team needed to regroup. They shifted it to a new grievance to turn the conversation away from their embarrassing errors. PAL insisted that they hadn't lost 60-some-odd court cases, since the cases were mostly dismissed for lack of standing. They had never had a chance to present their evidence. Every judge, this is Sidney PAL, every judge is corrupt, she claimed. We can't rely on them. 
The White House lawyers couldn't believe what they were hearing. That's your argument, a stun Hersherman said. Even the judges we appointed? Are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> Pal had more to say. She and Flynn began trashing the FBI as well as the Justice Department under, under, under Attorney General Bill Barr, telling Trump that neither, n- neither of them could be trusted. Both institutions, they said, were corrupt, and Trump needed to fire the leadership and get in new people he could trust. Again, this is a fucking meeting happening in the White House, in the Oval Office. Cipollone, stand, standing his ground amidst the mismatch of conspiracies, said they were totally wrong. He aggressively defended the DOJ and the FBI, saying they had looked into every major claim of fraud that had been reported. Flynn and Powell had long nursed their at- antipathy for- to the FBI and Justice Department. Uh, Flynn had pled guilty in 2017 to lying to the FBI during the Russia investigation, but withdrew the plea after hiring Powell as his lawyer in June 2019. The two alleged that the FBI had entrapped Flynn and failed to disclose exculpatory evidence known as Brady material, as required by law. They found an ally in Barr, a fierce critic of the Russia investigation, who finally directed the DOJ to drop Flynn's case. Hersherman, Hersherman knew that inside, inside the White House, as a defender of Barr and the DOJ, went off on Flynn again. Listen, the same people you're trashing, if they didn't produce the Brady material to Sydney, your ass would still be in jail. It was no longer technically true that Flynn would be in jail. He had received a post-election pardon, but Trump from Trump, but Flynn was furious. Don't mention my case, he roared. Hersherman responded, where do you think Sidney got this information? Where do you think it came from? It came from the exact people in the Department of Justice that you're saying are corrupt. Green, wearing jeans and a hoodie and a neck garter, piped up with his own conspiracy. I know how this works. I bribed Hillary Clinton for $18 million on behalf of the FBI for a sting operation. Hersherman stared at the eccentric millionaire. What the hell are you talking about? Why would you say something like that? Green brought up a bizarre Clinton bribery claim several more times during the meeting to the astonishment of the White House lawyers. Trump, for his part, also seemed perplexed by Breen, but he was not entirely convinced the ideas Powell was presenting were insane. He asked, you guys are offering me nothing. These guys are at least offering me a chance. They're saying we have evidence. Why not try this? The president seemed to truly believe the election was stolen, and his overriding sentiment was... Let's give it a shot. The word martial law was never spoken during the meeting, despite Flynn having raised the idea in an appearance on the previous day on Newsmax, a right-wing hive for election conspiracy. But this was a distinction without much of a difference. What Flynn and Powell were proposing amounted to suspending normal laws and mobilizing the U.S. government to seize Dominion voting machines around the country. Powell was arguing that they couldn't get a judge to enforce any subpoena to hand over the voting machines because all judges were corrupt. She and her group repeatedly referred to the National Emergency Act and a Trump executive order from 2018 that was designed to clear the way for the government to sanction foreign actors interfering in U.S. elections. These laws were in the view of Powell and Flynn and the others in the key to unlocking extraordinary powers for Trump to stay in office beyond January 20th. Their theory was that because foreign enemies had stolen the election, all bets were off, and Trump could use the full force of the United States government to go after Dominion. It was remarkable that the presidency had deteriorated to such an extent that this fight in the Oval Office between senior White House officials and radical conspiracists were even taking, was even taking place. How exactly are you going to do this? An exasperated Hersherman asked again. Later in the conversation, Newman again cited the 2018 executive order, which prompted Hersherman to question out loud whether she was even a lawyer. (laughs) Uh, Then Breen chimed in, uh, there are guys with, (laughs) there are guys with big guns and badges who can get these things. Hersherman couldn't believe it. What are you, three-year-olds, he asked? What are you, three, what are you, three years old, he asked? Uh. Lyons, the staff secretary, told the president that the executive order Powell and Flynn were citing did not give him the authority that they claimed that it did. To seize voting machines, Morgan, the campaign lawyer, also expressed skepticism about their idea of invoking national security emergency powers. To help adjudicate Trump, they patched in a national security advisor, Robert O'Brien, on speakerphone. Trump's personal assistant brought O'Brien into the call, 
with no explanation of what madness would await him. O'Brien said very little in the short time that he was on the call, but intervened at one point to say he saw no evidence to support Powell's notion of declaring a national security emergency to seize voting machines. There was so much fiery crosstalk, it was hard for anyone on the telephone to follow the conversation. Trump expressed skepticism at various points about Powell's theories, but he said, at least she's out there fighting. Yeah, that's, I guess. Uh, the discussion shifted from Dominion voting machines to a conversation about appointing Powell as a special counsel inside the government to investigate voter fraud. She wanted a top security clearance and access to confidential voter information. Lyons told Trump he couldn't appoint Powell as a special counsel at the Justice Department because this was an attorney general appointment. Lyons, Stimpeloni, and Hersherman, in fact, the entire senior White House staff who were aware of this idea, were all vehemently opposed to Powell becoming a special counsel anywhere in, her, in, in the government. By this point, Trump had also patched into the call his personal lawyer, Giuliani, and White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. Meadows indicated that he was trying to wrap his mind around what exactly Powell's role would entail. He told Powell she would have to fill out an SF-86 questionnaire before starting as special counsel. This was seen as a delaying tactic. The sense in the room was that Trump might actually greenlight this extraordinary proposal. Powell Cruz's argument to the president was, we have the real information. These people, your White House staff, don't believe in the truth. They're liars and quitters. They're not willing to fight for you because they don't want you to get their hands, they don't want to get their hands dirty. Put us in charge. Let us take control of everything. We'll prove to you that what we're saying is right. We won't quit. We'll fight. We're willing to fight for you, fight for you for the presidency. On some level, this argument was music to Trump's ears. He was desperate. Pal, on, Pal and her team were the only people willing to tell him what he wanted to hear, that a path to stay in power uh, in the White House remained. The Oval Office portion of the meeting had dragged on for nearly three hours, creeping by uh, beyond 9 p.m. The arguments became so heated that even Giuliani, still on the phone at one point, told everyone to calm down. One participant later recalled, when Rudy is the voice of reason, you know the meeting's not going well. True. <laughs> Giuliani told Trump he was, going to, he was going to come over to the White House. The president, having forgotten the others on the line, hung up and cut multiple people off the call. Hersherman, Cipollone, and Lyons left the Oval Office, but soon discovered that, Powell, that the Powell entourage had made their way to the president's residency. They followed them upstairs to the yellow Oval Office room and living room, where they, joined, where they were joined by Giuliani and Meadows. Trump sat, sat beside Powell in armchairs, facing the door, separate by a round wooden antique table. Giuliani sat in an armchair to the right, while Breen and Meadows sat in a couch. Breen wolfed down pigs in a blanket and little meatballs on toothpicks. The staff had sat on the coffee table. Hersherman was primed to brawl and ready to dump on Powell. It had been a long day. Rudy, he said, turning to Giuliani. Sidney was just in the Oval telling the president, uh, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> right, Sidney? He turned to Powell. Why don't you tell Rudy to his face? Eric, it's really not appropriate, Trump replied curtly. What's not appropriate, Hersherman shot back, turning to Powell. He said, why don't you repeat to Rudy what you just told to the president in the Oval Office, that he has no idea about the case and that he only just began to understand it a few hours ago. Three days later, Giuliani would publicly distance himself from Powell, telling Newsmax that Powell did not represent the president and whatever she was talking about was her own opinion. And that's, that's pretty much it. But, yeah, I don't know. Just fucking crazy-ass story. Uh, the other ones are pretty good, too. Is it fan fiction? I wish it was fan fiction. Unfortunately, that happened in our Oval Office. All of that happened. Sidney Powell is a special counsel. Every judge is corrupt, seizing control with the military, uh, getting all the Dominion voting, seizing Dominion voting machines. Like, it's just a fucking nightmare of conspiracy theories, man. And this was, you know, I remember the day that this happened or the day that they all went to the Oval Office. That was a big deal. And just to think that that was what was going on in our White, in the White House Oval Office for four hours is all these fucking morons and Patrick Breen arguing over bullshit conspiracy theories about Dominion voting machines is just, I don't know, it's just insanity. Just utter insanity. 
Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching another video. Remember, if you want to support me, the link to my Patreon is in the description. Also, you can subscribe to me on Twitch. If you have an Amazon Prime membership, you get one free Twitch subscription, so you can do that. All the links to everything are down in the description. You can follow me on TikTok for daily content, and yeah, thanks so much for watching. Also, remember to join the Discord and don't get red-pilled.